Good morning to my colleagues in the House of Representatives and, its, and in government, our Secretariat and all those present today. Let me start by thanking our speaker, Ferdinand, Mar Ferdinand Martin Romualdez, and my colleagues in the House of Representatives for, for, for putting their trust in me as a chairperson of the Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability. It is for me a great honor and privilege to heading a very important committee in terms of exacting accountability from our fellow government servants in the name of good governance. However, I am always mindful of how this committee had been accused in the past of being used for partisan politics to serve certain interests. I will endeavor to uphold the role of this committee to serve the public interest against illegal irregular and abusive conduct of our government officials and employees, but as the same prevent it from being used for selfish interests. Under Secretary Leocado Sebastian, the Chairman Sugar Regulatory Administration of SRA. Are you here? Good morning, Madam Chair. I'm Good here, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we could hear you. Yes. May we know uh, one? Yeah, Madam Chair, let me just uh, clarify that I I have already resigned. So I'm not the chair or I'm not, uh, I'm no longer representing SRA or the Department of Agriculture. But thank you very much, Mr. Madam Chair, for uh, this opportunity. Allow me to read my statement, Madam Chair. You may proceed. The Honorable Chairpersons of the House Committee on Agriculture, the House Committee on Good Governance, on Chair Mark and Berga, Chair uh, Florida Robes, the members of the committees, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. It has come to public knowledge that the Sugar Regulatory Administration has issued SO Sugar Order Number 4 authorizing the importation of 300,000 metric tons. The approval of this document, however, is now subject to a thorough investigation by the Office of the President. Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, I signed the document based on the data presented to me, based on the data presented by the Sugar Regulatory Administration. There is a clear indication of the rapidly diminishing supply of sugar. Current supply is projected to run out in August 2022, this month, and end of crop year 2021-2022. Based on the data from SRA, the Philippine Statistics Authority, the National Economic Development Authority, and USDA, from 2015 to 2019, the average annual supply shortage of sugar is a little more than 530,000 metric tons. However, I immediately resigned when I knew the president disapproved my action. It has been clear that my actions were not in keeping with the administration's desired direction for the sugar industry. I come before this committee, these two committees, with humble respect to its authority upon invitation. However, I defer to the authority of the Office of the President exercise in the conduct of its own inquiry with high respect for the intergovernmental courtesy between the executive branch and the Congress. Paraming salamat po. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Sebastian, but I'd like to remind you that the plan and control approach in public policy implementation involves planning, locking in, mobilizing, mobilizing resources, implementing resources according to plan, applying risk management, and evaluating. And you have to remember that you have an authorizer who happens in the name of the President Ferdinand Marcos. He is still the President of the country. I sympathize with you and empathize with you. Emphasize, sorry, not sympathize. I emphasize with you for clinging on the Filipino people. But I guess the more, the more uh, credible person to say that is the president of the country, not less than the president, Bongbong Marcos. I beg to disagree on your statement, but I thank you for, for you coming on, coming out into open with your statement. But of course, 
I beg to disagree because there's a process flow here and the policy authorizer has, the capa has actually the capacity to choose the implementers. I know you have that, but I think the miscommunication is on board. Thank you, our colleagues. Pagaganda ng iyong testimonya at sa webis po ay kayo po hihilingan namin ng iyong mga sinabi ngayon dahil naniniwala po ako sa iyong mga sinabi ng ating Pangulong Marcos ay talagang tumatawag mamula po siya yung naupo. Talagang sa mandato niya ay papabain ang lahat ng basic commodities sigit sa lahat ang mga kailangan nating pang-araw-araw. Naniniwala din ako sa iyong sinabi na iyong testimonya na sila po ay nagbibiting dahil ako po ay alam ko po yun. At hindi ho pa pwede magsingling. At kung bakit po nangyari ang lahat ng yan, abangan po natin sa mga susunod na ating inquiry para po makita po natin yung mga papeles at dokumento at kung bakit nga ba sila pumirma despite of the fact na sila po ay nakakalapit at nakakausap ang ating Pangulong Marcos and ang ating Executive Secretary. Uh, may we request everybody on Zoom and to the invited guests, I'd like to remind everybody that when you come on Thursday, please bring your position papers so we could review ahead of time because it is actually yeah, yeah, yeah we don't we don't have anything that you just came in on the zoom and it's it is not just a pick and both thing it's actually more of a process again thank you so much I'm congressman Bazaga, would you like to i would something? like to have the i would like to make this comment well actually and so far as members of Congress are concerned, we have the rules that we can attend personally the congressional briefing or even by Zoom. However, I noticed that our resource persons like engineer Hermenido Serapica is actually reporting for office. And I take reporting for office as compared to reporting in Congress. Reporting in Congress is much more important considering that we are having our duty in aid of legislation pursuant to the Constitution. And therefore, I would move that all resource persons be directed to appear personally in our hearing next Thursday unless they can show proof for medical reasons they are not permitted to go out of their house. I think that would be better. We are very old here. I am 72 years old. Others might be 70 years old, but we are taking the risk because it is our duty. So I must respectfully move. Madam Chair. Motion is accepted and carried. So I hope everybody made it clear. It has a Merontain direction na dapat sa webes kayo po ay nandito. Personally, I even asked our ComSec to ask everybody to come here personally with an RT-PCR, please. Because we here in Congress, we do daily antigen. And even me, before I come here, I came here, I did my antigen, no, RT-PCR test also. So again, to all our resource speakers, especially on Thursday, please abide with the rules and of course, of the request of, the, of this body. Thank you so much. Point of order. Okay, Congressman Franz Castro, you are now recognized. Then we follow with Congressman Wilter Palma. Mabaw. Then uh, Congressman Juliet, Congresswoman Juliet Ferrer. Well, with the idol, uh, yeah, I know that's despite our order. I just want to recognize our majority uh, leader, Manik Stanley okay. Sorry. Okay. okay, so sorry for that. Um, point of order, Madam Chair. So, itong, ito pong meeting na ito ay briefing lang on briefing the lang. situation of our sugar uh, sugar production. Ta tama po ba? So, RD, RD, SR, SR8 have the presentation para makita natin as a whole kung ano talaga yung, ano, no, yung kalagayan ng ating, ano, no, yung ating uh, production ng sugar or sugar industry. So, Meron po bang gano'n na, na presentation and then um, followed by by question by, with us. Okay. Um, so can we have that? Congressman Franz Castro, kanina po before we start, I already presented uh, the sugar industry based on our research from PSA. And then to be followed by SRA group, unfortunately, hindi po sila ganun kakompleto and we will be requiring them to present to us in person. That is will be on Thursday. For Congressman Paduano's inquiry, yes, on Thursday, po, this is just a briefing. Definitely, po, we will be pushing through 
with all the inquiry, basta po, maayos lang po at nasa process flow lang po tayo. When we say process flow, we consider the legalities and technicalities of this committee and so with the Agriculture Committee. That's all, Your Honor. Yes, Congressman uh, Zubiri. Sa sinabi po ni uh, Congresswoman Franz Castro, no? Um, I know this is not yet the investigation and this is just a briefing, but apparently hearing from the resource persons, there has been a problem with the issuance of sugar order number four. In fact, as Congresswoman Franz Castro said, meron na ho nag-resign dun sa mga pumirma. Ang, ang question ko po sana is yung mga hindi pa po nag-resign, bakit hindi po sila mag-resign? As a matter of uh, delicadesa po, yun sila sabi ni uh, Congresswoman Franz Castro, um, I um, join her po with that um, oh. question. Po. Okay, uh, again, we will go in the due process of the law. At the same time, we will hear them on Thursday. So everything will be heard on Thursday. Why they are not yet resigning? Actually, ang board of directors nila ay kulang. So ngayon lang sila na kompleto. So let us see. Why? Madam Chair? Yes, Congressman Arlene Lastly, Rosas. before we adjourn, Madam Chair, please yes. let me speak po. <laughs> yes, Para you... po ito sa pagtatanong din for the preparation ng ating ano, discussion. First, Madam Chair, um, gusto po natin makakuha ng listahan ng mga traders na nagtutulak ng 300,000 metric tons. At dapat po siguro merong listahan nito ang DA or probably ang SRA. Ano po? And second, yung dinaanan pong proseso ng resolution number four. And I believe merong resolution number three which is the previous one, yung 200,000 metric tons. And we would like also to be apprised of what happened to the 200,000 metric tons na um, ano na yung kanyang status ngayon, ilan pang nakaimbak, etc., etc. So sana po, we are hoping na makuha yung mga details tungkol doon. Ano? And yung reports po, pati yung process kung paano talaga yung naging uh, itsura nung dinaanan ng resolution number three na ito, Madam Chair. This is in preparation naman for ano eh. Uh, uh, Siyempre, Madam Chair, lastly, kasi siyempre ang, ang nag-aabang po sa atin dito yung mga magsasaka natin eh, di ba? Ano na ang gagawin nating action since um, may mga ganitong problema na kinakaharap tayo at uh, ultimately ang mga magsasaka natin ang dapat matanong din natin siguro or magkaroon din tayo ng representasyon na maimbita for next hearing ang representative ng mga magsasaka, Madam Chair. Yan. Again, Congressman Arlene Brosses is duly noted. I hope po yung sa ating pong sa mga magsasaka, I'm sorry, sa ating SRA and Department of Agriculture ay narinig po ang kahilingan ng ating mga na kasamahan dito, Congressman Franz Castro and Congressman Arlene Brosses together with Congresswoman um, Juliet Ferrer. No? Madam Chair? Yes, Congressman Abarzaga? Just a manifestation. Well, under our rules, actually these are the rules of the 18th Congress, which, which we, we have adapted okay. at the start of the session. In so far as motu proprio action is concerned, motu proprio action of a committee on any matter which is jurisdiction upon a majority vote of all its members. In so far as our committee is concerned, right now we have only 23 members. Mm -hmm. And under our rules, we should have at least 45 members. However, I can interpret it that the majority of all the members will be only the majority of all the members which have been who have been <coughs> already elected so that we can conduct business even if not all the members of the committee on good government had been elected in the plenary. However, there is another problem. Provided that the committee shall persecute authority from the committee on rules to proceed with their motu proprio investigation. Yeah. And, there is, and therefore, it is a requirement that we have to secure authority coming from the Committee on Rules. And finally, although we have adopted the present rules of procedure, I was informed that it would be published only this week and it will take effect seven days after each publication. Well, under these circumstances, I think we have to consider everything, considering that we shall be conducting an investigation which would be very important, very crucial, and lawyers may question that we are not following 
our own rules of procedure. It is all well, well taken, Congressman Barzaga. That is the reason why we're just doing the briefing so that everybody involved in this in this problem could relate to us all of the things that we really need as asked by Congressman Castro, Congressman Brosas, and Congresswoman Juliet Ferrer. It is also uh, in our obligation that to that to abide with the technicalities and the rules of this of this committee together with the motor proprio inquiry. So that is the reason why we, we have come. We have met our, our majority floor leader, uh, Congressman Manix Delipe, for that matter. I was also seeking advice from our committee secretariat to get all of those papers and documents pertaining to this inquiry.